sound of these buildings disappearing in billowing clouds of smoke and flame, do you stop to consider the tremendous waste, the loss of life and jobs, the torture of mind? Do you stop to realize that your home, business, your church could be next? When you see a charred and blackened body carried from a fire-wrecked building, do you think that the next time it might be one of your loved ones? Our communities spend millions of dollars, your dollars, on fire apparatus, equipment intended to protect your investment, your life. Do you gamble with this huge investment by being careless about fire prevention? Fires don't just happen. There never could be a disastrous fire if some careless person, perhaps yourself, didn't give it a chance to start. Dinner time at the station. The men have a chance to relax and prepare their own meals, but not always do they get a chance to eat them. They don't look much like heroes, but they are civilian peacetime heroes. I wonder what they think as they stand in line, waiting to eat. Will this meal be interrupted by a fire call, so they have to race to your assistance to save your life, or endanger their own to save your property or family, which you may have jeopardized by your carelessness? Pray you'll never have to call them, but if the need arises, do you know how? Is the number of your fire department at your fingertips? The seconds lost in looking it up could mean the difference between life and death. In a big city, moving the men and the machines to the right spot in the shortest possible time is a complicated business. The operator has received your call. It could be a burning roast that filled the house with smoke when someone forgot to turn the oven off. Or it could be a holocaust requiring the combined efforts of many men and machines. The dispatcher doesn't know. He has to get the firefighters to the scene. These men are off to battle. Maybe death will be a silent rider on the shiny apparatus with the firefighters. It's all part of a day's work. No time for dinner now. No time to think now. The job is to get to the fire. As dangerous as the fire itself is the ride to the scene. The drivers have to battle traffic as well as flames. Arrogant and ignorant motorists who wait for a policeman's order before clearing a lane for the speeding machines. After all, it isn't their house. Or is it? Do you pull to the nearest curb to let the operators by? Do you follow the engines, thus causing traffic jams and impeding the other trucks that may be following? Do you want to see the flames and smoke so badly that you are willing to risk the lives of the men who must get to the fire? This is a definite fire we're going to discuss. A school, one of the most dreaded types. This looks like a bad one. No time to waste. An alarm box is pulled, then a second, then a general. This one is bad. To those men back in the station and to the dispatchers, it means more men and more machines. You just can't push a panic button and turn out everything in the department. There'll be other careless people, other fires, other needs. So you move the men and machines like a master chess player on a giant board. But unlike the chess player, you have no time to think out your next move. But it's been planned long in advance, so let's get the wheels rolling. You are fighting the most ruthless enemy of them all, fire. While you concentrate on a frontal attack, you also protect your flanks. In outlying stations, you take a piece of the equipment here, another piece there, and send it to fill in at stations vacated by the original fire force. No need to leave an unprotected flank for fire, any fire, to attack in another direction out of the hands of the dispatcher now, and in the hands of the very capable firefighters. Be careful with the corner. Some engine or ladder truck may be coming up the street. My Johnny goes to that school. The Lord, don't let us be late. Pete, just a little faster. Are there any children trapped in the building? I never realized it was this far before. It must be pretty bad if they pull the general. There it is up ahead. No time.
time to look for Johnny now. Get the water to it. Where are those ladders? Not a very big fire, is it? Actually, not a very big school. There are 93 youngsters in there, already dead or dying. There's a terrific piece of equipment there. It's called the snorkel. The latest thing in a firefighting weapon. It'll help us get the water in where it'll do the most good fast. But that's not going to be much satisfaction to the fathers and mothers of those youngsters already dead. There's a tremendous mass of equipment here now, a whole army of firefighters. It looks confusing, but it's one of the most efficient operations you'll ever see. A planned battle that went off like clockwork. You'd think that the enemy was completely defeated, but you know who really won? Well, there are 95 dead in that building, killed by carelessness. No, not yours, someone else's. It's always someone else's. More men and machines. It looks as though we overwhelmed that fire by sheer numbers of men and machines, and we did. It was brought under control in 30 minutes. Oh, it seems much longer in these films, but 30 minutes after the first engine arrived, the fire was knocked out. lost before the first engine arrived. When that first engine rolled round the corner, the shock driver prayed softly as he saw it was the school. Most of the 98 victims were already dead. Even the speedy efficiency of a great modern fire department was just too slow. The men realized this in their hearts. But there was the job of pushing back the flames from the victims, of trying to rescue whatever children might still be alive. Police, the Red Cross, and other safety groups rushed to the scene, only to wait until the flames had been driven back, and to these men the task of bringing out the bodies. Please, Lord, don't let that be Johnny. Can there be anyone in there still alive? Knock those flames down, drive them back. We've got to get in to find out. You just can't believe it. It doesn't look that bad, does it? Was Johnny in school today? Was he one of the lucky ones to get out? Why don't they hurry? That's not fair. We couldn't use any more equipment if we had it. We have it licked now. Technically, it was a smashing victory for modern firefighting methods. But a very hollow victory. You see, 95 are dead. are waiting to make the run to hospitals. Traffic lanes have been cleared. Hospitals alerted. Doctors and nurses waiting. But you can't get the children to the hospital till you drive back the flames. And the best medical help in the world isn't any good to those already dead. 30 minutes. It seems like an eternity when you know there are a hundred children in there, most of whom will never get out. It's really tough on the firefighters now. But it's tougher on the parents who must simply wait. Here they come with another child's body. No, no, this one's a nun. She died at her post. a child. It could have been yours. But you didn't see the grimmest part. We couldn't even show it. Twenty-nine children sitting at their desks, dead. The fire is a stubborn enemy. It never quits. You have to lick it completely or let it run its course. And if it runs, it doesn't stop until it has completely destroyed its victims. And still men and machines move up to the fight now to do much except bring out the dead. Did that child move? Maybe this one's alive. Let's get him to the hospital. One side there, please. More 
more men, more machines. Do you think you've seen this all before? Do you think this has been going on for hours? But remember, this fire was under control in just 30 minutes. I almost said 30 short minutes. Actually, they were a lifetime for some long, tragic, torturous minutes for those parents who watched and didn't know whether their Johnnies or Marys were in the building. They couldn't even tell which one of those pitifully charred bodies might be Johnny or Mary. It's all over now. All over, that is, except the soaring task of bringing out the bodies, and still it goes on. The painful task of identifying the little ones in the temporary morgues and making the funeral arrangements and asking yourself over and over again, 